Hey guys, uh, so in this video here I thought I would do a little demo on some hard surface modeling and uh, what that means is basically the modeling of something that's like uh, mechanical or something that doesn't really like um, uh, bend sort of the way a human being does. It's like it's not got like soft skin or anything like that. It's just made of like different parts and things like that. Um, so this little guy here, this is a um, um, uh, an example of a character I worked um, I worked on a little while back for a project here, and um, I thought I would take us through the process of uh, of modeling uh, this guy. So um, um, to start out, you know, with, with, every, uh, with um, every you know, with the end model, objective, every good concept, concepts that I'm, uh, you know, what through here, every good idea applied to the things that you guys with might sketch with or with a plan of some sort, and I think that's just sort of generic and um, and like a universal concept, but it's I think it's just so true. And it's just like so universal to everything here. So here, this is at the sort of the most basic, um, the most basic uh, form here is just this little scribble here of what this character could be. And, um, you know, the original idea here was just a sort of a dumb generic robot that could be used for anything here. And, um, you know, here are some of the sort of the little ideas of what this character could do. It could just sprout out all these weapons here. You know, I come to think of it, I think I do have something on his head as well. Um, well, you can turn his head. Uh, so to start out with here, let me just create a new project here. Let's put this guy away. Here. Now, um, I, I guess there are two ways of doing this here. And let me go over the first way, which is not my favorite. But um, I'm going to create, basically, I'm going to create... Uh, a little plane here and another one in here and we're going to sort of uh, lock them together and make a um, make something that we can trace over much like maybe some of you guys might have um, have some experience with like illustrator or something where you might be tracing over like a, uh, a traditional drawing or something uh, so that's something we can do here um, I'm just going to do it in 3d uh, and that would just basically involve um, taking these um, these images here, let's pull up one of them here. So let's take the front view here. And I've, uh, you know, I basically have a sort of a PNG image here. Um, I could just bring this into um, into Maya by creating, um, let's create a plane. So under poly modeling, um, I'm going to just use this one. This one, this thing is important here. Um, just, you know, I deliberately do want to do a, um, uh, like the poly, uh, modeling here. Let's jump out of this view here. So I'm going to tap the space bar here and um, let me jump into the front view and I'm going to just draw a rectangle here. And on this rectangle here, I'm going to uh, to put an image of that um, of that robot here that I, I just showed you guys. Uh, before I start out here, because uh, um, just because that um, that image is a certain size, it's very important that I um, that I know that size here. So otherwise, you know, what's going to happen is it's going to look squished or squashed or whatever. Um, let's uh, let, let me just show you what that looks like here. So let me assign a new material to this here, and let's um, let's go with a surface shader. Um, we can do the surface shader because it doesn't really uh, have like um, shine uh, any shine to it. It doesn't react to light. It just emits the color of the um, of the, the texture you're painting with. We do that. Um, let's just go ahead and do that. Uh, so I've got the surface shader um, on the out color. Uh, I'm going to click this little checkered box and let's assign our reference to this here. So um, I'm going to choose a file and I'm going to navigate to that folder that I showed you guys. Where are we? Um, somewhere. Here we are. D. Oh, right. Okay. Here we are. And um, yeah, let's just say the front view and I'm going to just put this on here and it's probably not going to look right. Let's go ahead and press six or you can turn on the um, um, the textures here. Uh, here. Where we go? Yeah. So here, so this is looking funny here and it doesn't really, uh, it doesn't really match up. Um, so what we would need to do is uh, you need to map this out here. And this is why I don't like this thing here. So you can take this and then, you know, just do your best to sort of guess the uh, where this thing is going to 
map out here. And I don't know the proportions of this. And no matter what, uh, doing it this way here, it's always going to look funny. So if I do this, um, well, you know, um, here, I'm just kind of wasting time just showing you what I don't like about this here. Let's go with uh, the Z axis. There we are. Um, yeah, it looks a little better, but um, it's not perfect. You know, in no way um, is this really going to be like perfect uh, in terms of proportion, like I drew it, or like, you know, let's say this was we're drawing here, you know, it's really, really important that you get the proportions right and stuff. And um, if this thing is warped in any way, like, you know, then the proportions that you're tracing over, it's going to be wrong. So um, instead of doing that, what I'm going to suggest here um, is that uh, we take a look at this, um, uh, this picture. And I'm going to go here, uh, right click on this picture. Um, if you're in a Mac, I think there's an equivalent. You can inspect the, uh, the properties here. And what I'm going to try to find out here is, um, um, there we are under details. Um, I'm going to try to find out uh, what the, um, the size of this is. And here it says it's 960 pixels by 540 pixels uh, high. Um, so that's that's the information that I need here. So well, what that means is I said 960 by 540. So what I could do here is let's just get rid of this for a second and let's draw a new uh, rectangle here. I'm just going to draw something like that. And this is obviously that's the wrong proportion here. But um, with this, uh, what I'm going to do here is uh, click the um, uh, the uh, you know, the channel box and the layers um, icon here. And that gives us access to the input here that says polyplane um, one or whatever, you know, two or whatever it is. Um, this is the important part here. So it says width and height. And I, I am going to uh, enter in something that's the same proportion of what I just showed you. So again, um, the re where I find that out is here. Um, you know, you can, uh, if you have the picture here, it says uh, it's 960 by 540 and you can go under here under properties and look under uh, uh, details and somewhere in here it should say 960 by 540 or whatever it may be but that gives you the proportion that you're uh, you're looking for here um, so what that's really telling me I don't really have to make this thing like 960 units big or whatever it just means it's got to got to be like that same proportion so I can do look here uh, it says 12 let's go with uh, 9.6 and then here under height, let's go with uh, 5.4. So that is about the same size as our picture. And now that I have that, uh, what I could do is I could assign um, a surface shader here to it. And if we do, let's do a planner map here. Uh, I still don't like this very much, but um, sure, we can go with that. That's that's going to be proportional here. And one trick that you can do, knowing that this is the same proportion here, what you can do is you can open up the UV editor. And um, if you uh, right click, come on, there you go. Uh, so here, if you right click on the um, on the, uh, the little UVs here, they should line up to the corner. Now, just in case they don't, what you can do is you can take the UVs and select them by hand, right? I'm going to right click, go to UV. Um, and, uh, and then we can pull this around. You can see when you pull the UVs around, just in case uh, you're not familiar with the textures and UVs, UVs are about lining up the image to, uh, um, to the, the 3D shape here. So it's really important that this thing lines up. Um, one way to snap it to this, um, this grid here is I'm going to hold down X to snap the grid. And when I do that, you get this little guy here highlighted. And what that means is it's going to snap to any one of these points on this grid. And basically, you know, I can just line it up to the corners here. And because I, um, I, uh, I measured my, you know, I created my, my, uh, well, my, my reference plane here to be at the act proportion, then I know that this is going to be line up here. Okay. So, you know, the next step here is I could duplicate this here, of course, and rotate this this way here. Don't just trust your eye and just be like, oh, okay, this is about, you know, that's about right. No, it's not, you know, um, we don't, you really want to be like very precise with the reference here. Um, so don't just trust your eye here. Um, just go in and actually, like, you know, enter this in uh, by like the, uh, the correct values here. So, you know, I should have something that says 90 degrees. That is the, uh, the plane that I want. And I can just swap this out for a new material here. Um, in my case here, but yeah, let's go with the blend this time. 
All right, so here uh, I'm going to load up that picture uh, of another uh, view. So I had the front, so let's go with, um, did I have the front or the side? I think I had the front. And so I'm going to go with the side view this time, and let's load this up here. And um, is, that, is that about right? Yeah, that's this one's... This one's okay here, and anyway, um, I'm not going to use any of this here. I just did want to show you how you can do this, and because I have a PNG, um, this, uh, but well, this uh, blend it does support transparency, so I can do that. One thing I'm not liking here about this is like, uh, you know, it's also reacting to the light. So in case you have a blend as your uh, your your reference here, just uh, scroll down here to where it says specular shading, and just um, just dial down all this stuff and you're not going to get any shine. Only thing is here at the, uh, on the other side here, it's meant to um, it's meant to sort of show you the texture looking from one side. Now here it's going to be black because it doesn't receive any light. So the way around that here is if you go on the blend, uh, the blends attribute here, you, uh, attributes, you could um, come here to the top where it says color material attributes and um, take ambient color, just dial this up and now we're going to be able to see it on both sides. Um, so yeah, so that's just a little something here in the blend. Anyway, um, uh, sorry for that um, sort of kind of a lengthy explanation here because I'm not going to use that. I have a much better way of doing this here. So um, here are my drawings and I've just shown you those basically, you know, actually these do kind of line up here a little bit. Um, I have a much better way of doing this. Let's go here and I'm going to create a square, okay? Um, with a square, let's take anything that's like the same proportions here. So 512 by 512, that would work. I find that a little bit small here. Um, let's take uh, 2048 by 2048 pixels. Um, let's go with that. I'm going to take this, and that's uh, a square proportion, which is going to be great. And you know why? Uh, and that's because, um, you know, a square is a square no matter how big or how small. So if I pinch this down, you know, uh, a, you know the whole point of a square is all sides are equal here. So I don't really have to do any thinking um, and neither, or more importantly, uh, Maya doesn't really have to, um, you know, uh, do any sort of scaling of the UVs and stuff. It just fits, you know. So that's one of the reasons why you see uh, yeah, uh, textures, um, you know, in, uh, in square proportions. So let me just take these guys and there we are. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take all these layers here and just going to just Throw them in there, right? Uh, let's take the side and what else? Um, oh, right, the top. Okay. Okay, so um, let's go in here. I'm going to zoom in here. Let's take uh, layer two. Um, I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not really going to explain uh, too much of Photoshop. Uh, this concept here should work on pretty much any image editor you choose. Uh, the point is, is I want to make sure that these parts here are. Um, are lined up, and you can see here uh, this, you know, this sphere here. It's, the sphere is like uh, it's also a perfect shape. So the, um, you know, the size of this it should be pretty much the size of that. So what I'm going to do here is let's just take this and let's just kind of adjust this to fit that proportion here, and I'm going to call that about the same here. I guess that's our reference here. It's very very important that these things do line up here. Whoops, don't do that. You see what I just did here? Don't ever do that because that's going to be uh, the wrong proportion. You want to have this, these things sort of perfectly lined up here. Now one way to do that is this, and obviously this guy is a, um, you know, simple shapes. Uh, so I'm just going to go with this. Uh, one, one way to line things up here if you're in Photoshop, uh, you can use your rulers, and the way to get that is to press Control R, right? Another way to get that here is to come here to uh, to Views. You see here Control R, right? And that gives you the rulers here. And from the top of the page here, I can just uh, grab, uh, you know, I can just grab that line and just drag it here to the bottom here. So this, you know, I can say I want this part to line up with that top. Uh, what do we? I want to call that that top lid. And so that means that this part, the tip of the head, let's get in there. Let me zoom in a little bit more. Uh, this uh, this top of the head, whoops, this top of the head should be right about there, right? And that means that this, um, 
Yeah, okay, yeah, that does fit. You see the top lid here, or what do you want to call it? The rim lines up with that rim, and the top of the head lines up there. So that's cool. Um, uh, you know, if you're doing a more, uh, like a more elaborate character, say like a human being or something, sometimes I like to, um, uh, like on a human being, just quickly getting into this here, I, I like to go with, um, you know, on the faces here, like let's say the corners of the eyes, uh, lips and things like that. Um, I want those all to line up, otherwise the um, things are going to look a little funny here. So um, anyway, this kind of does line up, and just to, um, just to be sure, you know, um, I could go in here, and well, it's a little bit off, it's a little bit off, okay? Um, let's go with that, okay, I'll just scale that. That should line up, yeah, that lines up pretty nicely here. And uh, I'm going to go with this, and let's go here, and I'm going to crop this uh, this square down to the correct size. So I'm just going to draw a new square here by using my crop tool. You can press C, um, and then hold. I can hold down Shift to get that um, that size. I'll just center it in around here, like so, so I can fit all of them on that single image. And um, I guess let me uh, spread them apart a little more. I'm going to take this layer two. Bring that guy over here. Let's take this. Whoops. Layer three. There we go. Um, I'm, I guess I can just hide the background here, and I'm going to save this out as a. Uh, I guess we could save it as a, J, uh, a PNG here. Um, where am I? There we are. Okay, so let's just save it out as a PNG. There we are. And um, robot square reference. Okay, um, yeah. All right, this is much better. And uh, what I can do is I can just select my little plane here and I can just draw a square. One thing I do want to point out, I don't know if I was very clear on this here. Um, the reason I like this plane here is because, um, you know, you can choose, it's very, very easy to deal with polygons. And one of the things that I really um, uh, want to make a point here showing is um, is this on the polyplane here uh, if you have the um, the width uh, you can see the width and the height are the same thing but more importantly so yeah more importantly here um, you know I have the, um, the the width here and we can set that to whatever size we want um, you know as long as it's proportional here I want these two to be the same but more importantly here I have the um, the subdivision width and the height um, I have these as one, and this is really cool because I don't get these lines here. So uh, especially when I'm modeling here, uh, I think most of us, um, at least speaking for myself, um, probably I'm speaking probably for a lot of people here. I don't uh, I don't find it really helpful to. I mean, I find it really helpful to have some sort of idea of how my uh, my model is being being built, like the divisions and all that stuff here. So um, you know, I want to I want to know kind of you know, what I'm dealing with here. So I like to see those lines here. Uh, what, you know, I like to see those lines on the model. And if I have lines on my reference plane, then that kind of conflicts here. So I'm going to just, um, um, just uh, dial that down. And uh, this is what's cool about this, um, this square reference plane here is I can, uh, let's assign a new material here. This time, um, I'm just going to go with a blend because I guess the blend has transparency. So let me just go here. Let's again, um, I'm going to turn this stuff off uh, down here, but let me show you why again, just as a reminder. So let's go in here. Let's pull up that, um, what do we call it? The square reference. There we go. So this is the thing I just put together in Photoshop and you see with the blend, um, and a PNG here, it, um, it gives you transparency. Um, that, that, there's that shine. I don't really like, but I can fix that here. Um, I guess I could have done a Lambert material as well. Um, that would give me transparency. Um, but anyway, um, uh, yeah, so I've got that shine here don't, I don't I don't like, you know, and I'm just gonna get rid of that. Um, I can see through this thing here. And um, let's just turn up the ambient color. So now we can see on both sides here. And uh, the, the best thing about this here is, do you see that? I didn't really have to set up any of this stuff. It just fits, you know, square is square, no matter, you know, what the size of that square is, the whole point is all the sides are the same. Um, all right, so I've got everything I need on this single image. Uh, I'm going to just start making my robot here. 
uh, well, at least the, um, the reference here. Let's rotate this about uh, 90 degrees. Um, yeah, that, that works. Um, I'm going to just line this up here to the center. Um, now, this is going to be my front image, so I'm going to do that the best I can right here. You know, uh, one thing, um, while we're, uh, we're on the subject of like lining up the reference image here, you know, this is going to be my front view. So um, I want to line this up in a way that this character is going to be built. So if this is the ground plane, you know, most, most of the times when we're thinking of a character or something, you're thinking about it sitting on a ground plane. And this, um, as you may have seen in some of the other videos here, this is like the, um, the vertical uh, axis. Well, this is like this ground plane. It's like zero on, uh, on the, the Y axis here. So I think it would make sense, depending on what this character is going to do. In my case, he kind of flies, so I might want to lift him up off the ground a little bit here, like there, and then um, you know just sort of center him here to, uh, to where I think that should be. So I'm going to just maybe put that also on the center of this axis here and do that. All right, so we got that. I'm going to press Control-D to duplicate. Um, let's take this, uh, this thing here. I press Control D, and now because uh, the the side and the front view are in the same axis, I could probably just flip this around here very easily, and um, let's just fix that up, make it be 90. And I'm going to pull this so it intersects here um, with that. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. And then here, um, I could just make sure this fits right there. I bet here I could probably zero that. Yeah, there we go. I could zero that out so it really is sitting on the um, the the X uh, center. And here I'm getting some uh, I'm getting some little little bit of weirdness here with the uh, uh, with the transparency, and that's to be expected here. But um, I'll deal with that in just a second here. Let me get rid of this extra junk that we don't want here. So I'm going to select this, and let's take our multi cut tool here, and we can just cut the parts that we don't want away. So here, I'm mean, gonna do this a couple different ways. It doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna hold down control and just draw a loop straight down the center here. And that's kind of why I space these guys apart. You know, here, you know, I could just now uh, right click and go to faces and then just, you know, just delete that out of the picture. Uh, let's take this, let's do the same. You know what, with this, I could probably save myself a copy. So I'll press control D, scoot that out to the side. Um, and then here, um, yeah, let's just get rid of all this stuff here. You know what? Let's just get rid of that and whatever. Um, I could cut this here, but just to show you guys a, a nice little trick as well. Another thing you can do is you can take these vertices here, and if I were to um, to pull them down, that would scale the the um, the texture as well. But here's a little trick that might come in handy for some different things. I don't know if this I I don't know maybe if the reference is something I'd use it on, but um, you know, it's good to know about here. If you um, if you come to this little um, uh, hammer, uh, that's the tool settings. It's next to the channel box here. This little guy here. There's two hammers. This is the uh, the modeling uh, uh, toolkit, and then there's this thing here that um, you know. This is the tool settings. So it's the one here next to the uh, the channel settings. Uh, click on this, and for your move tool, your move tool, or any transform tool here, you're going to have something here. Uh, this little checkbox here that says um, preserve UVs. And what that means here is I've got this thing at a certain size. Uh, if I pull this down here, it's going to do the best it can to keep those, uh, the, uh, the UVs, you know, the way the texture lines up, it's going to do the best it can to keep that, you know, the same here. So that's something you could, you know, you could work with here. Um, there is a little bit of distortion with that. So I'm just going to, uh, uh, keep it like that for now, but that is something that might come in handy for other things here. So for now, let me just chop this off like this. Um, let's take this, let's delete, and there we go. Uh, almost done. Um, I'm actually, just for the time being, I'm not really going to um, uh, model the top here, but I'll, I'll keep this guy around here for just, just for now. I'll just hide it. I'll press Control H to hide it. And then this, um, Let's do this. I'm going to go here to uh, modify and we will center the pivot. And then, you know, just, I guess we could do that. And maybe, you know, one, one even better way to do this here is I can press uh, D to access the pivot point. And then um, I'll just 
make that line up here to the world zero position. Uh-oh, one thing I'm noticing here is this guy doesn't really line up. So let's pull that over here. Okay, so that means on, on Z, I think I do want a translate, uh, you know, I want a zero value on that. And let's just bring this guy here to the center. Yeah, that looks, that looks, that looks about right. Yeah, I think maybe just a little bit more. There we are. All right, so that's that's really that that sort of pull is going to be straight down the center of this robot. I'm going to take this. Let's go to modify freeze transformations. And what that does is it makes all this stuff be the uh, you know be zero, which is exactly the way I want it. And then just to be on the safe side here, um, I can just press D to access the pivot. I'm going to drag these pivots down, and as I do so here. Um, you know, as I do so here, they just sort of come down here like so uh, from where they were before. I want to snap them to the world zero position. So again, um, just like I was doing uh, earlier in this video here when I was working with the UV editor, um, if I press, if I hold down X on my keyboard, um, you can snap to the grid and that will snap these pivots to the world center right there. And you can see that's not quite the center, but um, that is. So here, that's cool because um, I know that if I zero this out, wherever I move this around now, you know, if I accidentally do that, um, you know, I can just zero that, that value out and just have that come back here. So this is, this is what I want. And I'm going to take these reference planes and let me um, make a new layer. So I'm going to, uh, on the channel box here, I'm going to come all the way down here to this section that's um, it's got the layers, display layers. Um, and uh, I'm gonna click on this little piece of paper looking thing with a plus sign on it, and I'll create a layer. Now with these things selected, I'm gonna just select that layer, and I'm gonna right click on that, and I'm gonna add the selected objects to the layer. And uh, what this gives me here is it gives me the ability to turn these things on and off, right? And that's, that's really cool, it's really helpful. More importantly though, it gives me uh, this on this little empty box here. I'm going to click on this a couple times. So if I do, do that, it becomes like, I don't know, a template. And now uh, under the R, I guess it's renderable, but it's not really selectable. So, I mean, uh, I can see it, but I can't really, um, I can't really select it here. So this is cool. This is exactly what I want. Um, you know, just uh, to show you guys here uh, what's going on with this, this funny transparency here. Um, that's got to do with this uh, viewport uh, viewport 2.0 and you know just to show this here um, if I want to change this here it says object uh, object sorting let me go back here I'm going to go here to the renderer it says viewport 2. viewport 2.0 kind of a tongue twister there um, here it says transparency algorithm I'm going to change it from object sorting to uh, depth healing and that's going to give you sort of a I don't know, more of a, a defined uh, sort of cut for the transparency. Otherwise, you're just going to be seen through the, um, the, the PNG and stuff. Uh, but this, this can be, you know, helpful if you want. Anyway, um, I've got all I need to start modeling here. Um, so I'm going, to, um, uh, I'm going to pause the video and just um, uh, start, uh, start modeling.